Today we're reviewing the second and third trimester fetal anatomy protocol. Always begin the study with a limited exam, which includes the fetal position, placenta location, heart rate, and amniotic fluid evaluation. Fetal presentation is obtained in the lower uterine segment at the cervix. Here, the fetus is shown in the cephalic presentation. Next is the placenta. At least three sagittal images are obtained demonstrating the inferior, mid, and superior margins. Three transverse images are also obtained demonstrating right, mid, and left margins. Be sure to take an image of the location of the placental cord insert with color. The fetal heart rate is obtained using M-mode or Doppler if necessary. The amniotic fluid is either measured as a maximum vertical pocket or in four quadrants for a total AFI, which is only performed at 28 weeks and greater. The sagittal spine images are obtained to show there are no defects in the contour. Two or three images are usually sufficient. Be sure to follow it all the way down to the sacrum. Transverse spine images are taken at the C-spine around the level of the jaw, and T-spine images are taken at the level of the heart. L-spine is taken at the level of the kidneys and stomach, and S-spine is taken at the level of the iliac wings. The head circumference and biparietal diameter are measured at the level of the thalamus and third ventricle. The cerebellum and orbits should not be visible in your image. Measure the BPD from the outer bone to the inner bone. Do not include the fetal skin in the head circumference measurement. From your head circumference image, you can angle towards the back of the head to measure the cerebellum, cisterna magna, and nuchal fold. Remember, the nuchal fold is only measured up to 21 weeks. The lateral ventricle is measured at the choroid plexus. Remember, you are not measuring the echogenic choroid plexus, but the anechoic space the choroid resides in. Image both right and left choroid plexus, which may require two separate images. The cavum septum pellucidum is seen as an anechoic rectangular box at the anterior portion of the brain. You'll need to rule out a cleft lip by demonstrating the fetal nose and lips. The image of the orbits can be obtained in a few different planes. Your goal is to demonstrate that a third orbit would fit evenly between the two existing orbits. Measurements aren't necessary unless you work for a high-risk clinic. The profile will rule out any abnormal projections from the forehead as well as frontal bossing. You will also need to evaluate the chin for micrognathia. Both upper extremities will need to be demonstrated showing two bones in each lower arm, the radius and ulna. Try to image both hands open, but do not spend lots of time trying to count the fingers. The AIUM standards dictate we demonstrate two arms and two hands. The four-chamber heart view demonstrates atria and ventricles of the same size and shows an intact septum. An image of the left ventricular outflow tract demonstrates the left ventricle leading out to the aorta. The right ventricular outflow tract will show the right ventricle leading to the pulmonary artery. The right and left outflow tracts will cross each other, which rules out transposition of the great vessels. Kidneys can be imaged in sagittal or transverse. Use color Doppler to demonstrate the renal arteries. This will help prove there are two kidneys. The abdominal circumference is taken at the level of the stomach and umbilical vein. The branching of the left and right portal veins is also seen. The cord insert is seen slightly inferior to the abdominal circumference. To evaluate the number of vessels in the cord, obtain an image of the transverse bladder and turn on your color Doppler. 
both umbilical arteries should be visualized on either side of the bladder. Two arteries plus the umbilical vein will prove this is a three-vessel cord. Measure the femur length when it is horizontal to your probe. A length of seven or more days less than the gestational age is a soft marker for Down syndrome. Demonstrate both lower extremities, trying to include the fibula and tibia of each leg. The top of the foot should not be seen in this view, or a club foot will have to be considered. Demonstrate both feet, but do not spend time trying to count the toes. It's a good idea to obtain an image of the heart, stomach, and bladder. This will demonstrate the heart and stomach are on opposite sides of the diaphragm, and also demonstrate a normal size bladder. The gender is necessary to demonstrate for certain chromosomal defects, even if the patient does not want to know. This is an image of the male gender. And this is an image of the female gender. That concludes our review of the fetal anatomy protocol. Don't stress out about your scanning time. You'll gain speed with more practice.